This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. What's up guys, this is Vinylic Puma and I'm back with another Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel Guns and Weapons Countdown. Today we'll be going over some of the best explosive guns and weapons from both games. Now I know what you guys are thinking, didn't you already make the explosive guns list when you were talking about the best tour guns? Well, no because there are some explosive only weapons from other manufacturers as well. While you won't be seeing anything from like Malwan or Vladoff, you will be seeing some weapons from Jacobs, TDR, and even Bandit of all things. So without further ado, these are the top nine best explosive guns and weapons in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel starting now. Number nine, the Cobra. So for those of you that have been around on this channel for a little while, you probably know that I'm not a huge fan of the Cobra. While it's a Jacob's weapon that deals pure explosive damage, it's mostly affected by percentage based boosts to either sniper rifle or non-elemental damage, as opposed to boosts to explosive or grenade damage. Uh, this mostly has to do with the way the weapon has been coded by the developers, as most Jacob's weapons typically are boosted from non-elemental bonuses, as opposed to explosive or elemental ones. Otherwise, the only real problems with the Cobra is that it's a bolt action sniper rifle, like many of the other blue rarity snipers from Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel, and that the Cobra has an unbelievably low chance to drop in game thanks to how the developers of the Tor campaign DLC coded the drop rates for it. Supposedly, the Cobra has a less than 1% chance to drop from a specific enemy type whenever Borderlands 2's weapon generator causes a sniper rifle to drop within that Tor's campaign DLC. So every time a sniper rifle drops from one of Pete's bruisers, you get a less than 1% chance for it to be a Cobra, which makes it rarer than probably some of the pearlescents in the game. Now, if you're curious about this gun, see if you can get someone to give you one. It's not really worth farming for it. Number eight the Meteor Shower slash bonus package. So I covered this weapon in the Torg video, and like I said then, both of these are essentially the same thing in the sense that both spawn two sets of child grenades for a lot of additional explosions when compared to your standard Merv grenades that are out there. Uh, now, the differences are that the Meteor Shower has a higher Merv grenade multiplier than the bonus package, and the explosions from the Meteor Shower cover a larger distance. Conversely, the bonus package deploys over a contained area and is more difficult to acquire than the Meteor Shower. However, unlike the Meteor Shower, the bonus package can appear in both Borderlands 2 and the sequel. If you're playing Borderlands 2, you're definitely going to want a Meteor Shower because it's better and is also much easier to acquire in that game. If you're playing the pre-sequel, your only choice is the bonus package, and you're probably going to want to use it in high-gravity scenarios, since Mervs deploy over a wider distance, uh, the lower the gravity is. Number 7, the Torg Mata. Now this is another one I covered in the Torg weapons video, but the Torg Mata is sort of a weird cross between a more conventional shotgun from Torg and the Flacker. Uh, when the Torg Mata's projectiles collide with the ground, the projectiles emit this flak that then explodes a couple of seconds later. Uh, while you might think that this flacking effect is useful at first glance, the flak can deal additional damage to frozen enemies if you aren't quite as accurate as you would like to be. It's a shame that this is only in the pre-sequel and that you can only acquire it for a short period of time during both your first and second playthrough, as it is a quest reward for a side quest at the very start of the main quest line. Now, while you can acquire higher level versions in later difficulties, it stings that you can't take advantage of using the Torg Mata later on in those first two playthroughs, especially since you'll have some good cryo weapons by that time. Number six, the Love Thumper. So despite its looks, the Love Thumper is a bandit roid shield, and upon first glance, you would actually think that the Love Thumper is actually a Torg shield, uh, thanks to its checkered aesthetics. Now, in my opinion, while the Love Thumper isn't the best roid shield for co-op multiplayer play or in terms of damage, the Love Thumper is ideal for play in single player mode. Um, the Thumper also has a very long recharge delay, so you don't have to worry about the shield recharging in the middle of battle, where you ultimately lose your roid damage. Now, I did mention this is a bad weapon for co-op, 
And that's because if you play with other people, the Novas that are emitted by the Love Thumper can deal damage to other players. This is why some within the community recommend that you have both a Love Thumper and another Roid Shield. Uh, that way you have a good shield for co-op and a good shield for single player as well. Now, it's not the strongest grid shield in the game, uh, as that title goes to the height of Terramorphous. Now, regardless, this is a shield all melee characters should have. Number 5, the Flacker. So the Flacker is a great weapon, however upon first use you may have had a bad experience because the bulk of this weapon's damage potential is spread out over a much larger area than most of the other guns and weapons from both games. Now for this reason, the Flacker is good up against enemies that are tightly grouped, as well as really large enemies like the Warrior, and this might also be a good weapon to use up against something like Terramorphus and the Son of Cromorax. It's also worth mentioning that there is an exploit that you can perform that makes use of the passive weapon effects glitch for both games that will significantly boost the Flacker's damage. If you shoot the Flacker and then quickly swap to a Torg rocket launcher, you can boost the damage of the Flacker projectiles. In fact, this trick makes certain bosses like EOS and Clips much easier to defeat as you can deal enough damage to compensate for their massive shields and health. The Flacker isn't my go-to Torg shotgun, however this next weapon is. Number 4. The Sword Splosion. So, the Sword Splosion is an odd explosive gun or weapon to say the least. First, it's the only legitimate Torg e tech shotgun in Borderlands 2. Second, instead of firing e tech splat gun projectiles, it fires swords that explode into more swords when they come into contact with enemies or random surfaces. Uh, the range on the Sword Explosion seems to be a little bit higher than the range of regular splat guns, but at the same time, uh, think of it as being something similar to like a Torgmata. However, you get exploding sword grenades, which are stronger than the exploding bits of flak that are on the Torgmata. Now, the Sword Explosion is really one of the best guns and weapons from the Dragon Keep DLC for Borderlands 2. It's also one of the top recommended pieces of gear that I would recommend that you acquire if you decide to play Axton for Borderlands 2. Really, I don't think you could go wrong with this gun. It's a great Torg shotgun, and I recommend it. Number 3, the Laser Disker. Now, the Laser Disker is an explosive only weapon that's made by TDOR and can only be acquired in Borderlands 3 sequel. The Laser Disker shoots these disc like projectiles that explode on impact, and for this reason, it goes well with enemies that you've frozen with cryo based damage. Uh, while the Laser Disker can't perform critical hits without assistance, it deals some of the highest reload damage of any TDOR weapon from both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. It's also possible to kill Irajira in one hit with one of these things, especially if you get it in his mouth. Um, it's really a shame that you can't use this thing in Borderlands 2, as it would be really interesting to see this thing in action with Axton the Commando when he is like designed for like a TD or reload build. But I digress. You should pick one of these up off of Shadow Trap if you get the chance. Number 2, the Unkempt Herald. It probably wouldn't be fair to you guys if I didn't include the Unkempt Herald on this list. Uh, now, the Herald is exclusive to Borderlands 2, though if you look up early E3 2014 gameplay videos for the pre-sequel, you'll notice that some people are using Unkempt Heralds in the pre-sequel. Uh, so it looks like the Herald was ultimately cut from the pre-sequel, and it was ultimately replaced with the 88 Fragnum. And while the Fragnum is good, it doesn't quite hold a candle to the Unkempt Herald. Now, the Herald is really one of the most overpowered guns in Borderlands 2, as it's literally great on every single character. The other nice thing about the Herald is that while the ammo consumption for the weapon is fairly high, the amount of damage dealt versus the amount of ammo used is a pretty good ratio. Um, it's also worth mentioning that the Herald fires 7 projectiles per shot for the standard versions, and the double accessory or the double penetrating version fires 14 projectiles per shot. Uh, definitely don't head out for the vault without an unkempt herald. Number 1. Canada's Laser. I still remember the first time I used this up against a frozen enemy and aimed at its crit spot. It was an instant kill and it was awesome. Now, Canada's Laser is an explosive only laser rocket launcher from TDOR and it's one of, if not the best rocket launchers from Borderlands the pre-sequel. While it does take some skill to use when compared to something like the Norfleet, provided you've frozen an enemy, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a second wind, especially if you aim for their crit spot. 
Um, I've got to admit that it's kind of weird that TDR weapons are awesome in Borderlands 3 sequel, while the TDR guns from Borderlands 2 are nowhere near as good. After all, in terms of the Borderlands timeline, it seems like TDR would be able to make the Kanada's laser or the laser disker by the events of Borderlands 2. And you know what it is? It's got to be that their new CEO is just shit. But ultimately, if you can put yourself through it, I would say it's worth it to kill EOS and Eclipse for one of these things. It's a great rocket launcher. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.